What is up YouTube? Okay, I've got another little After Effects tutorial for you today. I'm gonna to show you how to do this glowing electricity edges effect. Now you can actually use this technique on pretty much anything, but it's gonna work best on shots that have easily definable, really obvious, high contrasty edges. This is a technique that I developed on a project for Adidas recently. We wanted to create this futuristic neon courtroom style, and I wanted something that could make the everyday objects in the courtroom a little bit more interesting and a little bit more exciting. And this is actually pretty straightforward to create in After Effects, so let's dive in and I'll show you how it's done. All right, so this is the finished thing that we're gonna be making. Got to open in After Effects here. Like I said, you can pretty much apply this technique to anything that you want. It's gonna work best on shapes and objects with kind of high contrasty edges. Uh, so that's why this crest works quite well because the electricity can kind of follow the contours of the shape quite neatly. All right, so I've got the base footage loaded up here. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna go Command D. So the, the trick to this technique is pretty much just using this find edges effect in After Effects. So you're gonna drop find edges on top of the duplicated layer. And straight away you can see it literally does what it says on the tin, it finds the edges. Now what we want for this is we want it to be inverted. So you're gonna go up here and you're gonna tick invert. And then what I want next is I wanna make this much more contrasty. So I'm gonna drop on a brightness and contrast effect as well. Really crank up the contrast. So it's just gonna leave me with these edges. I might even drop the brightness a little bit. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on a tint effect. So drop that on top as well. And this is where we're gonna select the color of our electric glow. So I'm gonna make this a purpley blue color. I'm actually gonna pump up the brightness as well. That's more like it. So that's just gonna give us a really solid edge. Now we need to cut it out and we need to make it look like real electricity flowing along these outlines. And the way that we're gonna do that, I actually created a special texture for this, which I'm calling electricity surface. Let me just load it up for you. Here it is. And what I wanted to create here was basically a kind of static jungle with lots of little electrical connections zipping around. Uh, I actually made this, just quickly create a new solid Black solid is fine. And I'll just use a fractal noise. And I played around with some of these. Just messing around with all the different settings here, you can see you can create all these kind of different looking noise textures. And I basically just spent a while playing around with the fractal noise settings until I created a texture that I really liked and that I thought was gonna work well for this. Uh, and that is electricity surface here. So you lucky people don't have to make this from scratch because I've already made it for you and there's a link to it down in the description below. And there's actually two little versions of it. This one here is slightly different. This is a bit more skinny and a bit thinner. Might be a bit more relevant to whatever you want to create. So see which one of these is going to work best for you. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to grab electricity surface and we're going to drop it on top of this layer here. Let's just scale it down so it kind of fits the composition neatly. And then we're going to use this electricity surface to chop out the electrical edges that we've created underneath. So the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna use a luma mat and that's gonna use the brightest parts of the electricity surface layer to cut out sections of the electricity outlines that we've created. So let's try that. So let's throw on luma mat electricity surface. And you can see straight away, we've got some bits of blue poking through, but we've also got some bits of black here that we don't want. So let's just play that through. So you can see we've got this cool dancing blue electricity, which we did want to create, but the black's a bit messy. So let's just set the blending mode of this onto add, and that's going to remove the black, but keep the light parts. So you can see straight away, we've got pretty much the effect that we're trying to create. Now the problem is we're also getting it in these cracks on the wood, which we don't want. So I'm just going to draw a really simple mask just to keep the bits that we do want. And I'm going to go into my electricity surface layer, and I'm just going to literally go grab the ellipse and I'm going to just draw a mask like this. I'm just going to move this mask to kind of roughly where I want it. And I'm going to set a keyframe there, like that. Let's just come back to the beginning, set another keyframe, and maybe do one right at the end as well. Hasn't moved very much. And then let's just add some feather. So let's add like 400 pixels of feather in that, so it kind of neatly blends off to the edges. You can also just do a bit of expansion as well. Let's just make the mask a little bit smaller, and then come to the beginning, We'll make the mask much bigger. So you can see there it's going to cover everything. You could draw a really neat mask around all the different contours and stuff. But for this, it's probably going to work just with quite a rough mask. You're not really paying much attention to where the electricity is actually flowing. 
Now that's looking pretty good. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pre-compose these top layers. So right click, select them both, pre-compose, and let's just call that electricity surface. Hit OK, and we've got our surface there. Let's just have a look at this by itself. We're going to hit solo. So you can see this is what we've created, this cool dancing electronic pattern. I think I want this to be a little bit brighter and a bit more contrasty. So I'm actually going to throw on a levels adjustment. Jump that on top here. And then if you zoom in, you can see we're actually getting a bit of fuzz and static in these kind of areas that aren't edges. So let's get rid of them by just, by just dragging the left-hand edge of the levels curve like this. Just gonna make a bit more contrast in it. I'm gonna take the middle one as well and push it back. And that way we're just keeping these edges as the only bits that we actually want. And there we go, we've got our flowing electric surface. And that's how easy this effect is to create. Now, what I had in the original version is I added a bit of flicker into this as well. And the way that we're gonna do that is simply by keyframing the opacity of this. So if we hit T, it'll bring up the opacity. And then we're gonna actually click on the stopwatch here. Let's start it off at zero. There we go, add a keyframe, maybe five or 10 frames in, we'll come up to 100. And then let's drop it back down again, so it sort of flickers. So we'll drop it back down to 20, and then go a bit further on, bring it back up to 100. And then let's make it sort of slowly fade out across the whole thing. So come right to the end and grab a keyframe of zero at the very end there. So play that through, you can see it sort of comes on, flickers, and then goes back down again. So that's pretty much it for this effect. Now I'm just going to show you a couple of other things that you can do to make this look a little bit nicer. The first one that I would do is I would add a glow. So you're going to go over to here, into the effects, you're going to type in glow. You can drop on the default After Effects glow. And you can see it's just making those edges look a little bit nicer. We've got a bit more of an edge going on here. Let's just zoom in so we can see what's going on. So you could turn this up a little bit so we could go up to sort of, maybe pump it up to yeah 100 or so on the radius. We could turn that intensity up to like two or three as well. Because in real life, this sort of thing would glow a bit more naturally. It would, it would illuminate the dust and it would illuminate other areas of the shield. Uh, so I think by adding a little glow, that definitely makes it look a little bit nicer. And you can play around with the color of your glow as well. Let's make our glow kind of a bit blue. Change color B as well. Straight away, we've got something that's looking a lot nicer. If we go back into the original comp that I showed you first, you can see you've got these kind of cool beams coming out of it as well. Now, to do this, you're going to need a paid plugin, and it is a really, really, really good plugin. I would 100% recommend it. It's like one of my favorite plugins. I use it on literally everything. It is called Optical Glow, uh, and this is made by Red Giant. Uh, it's part of their VFX suite, and you can see all these examples of awesome glows. Um, and that's exactly what I would throw on this to make this level up a little bit more. Now, this is quite an expensive plugin. Um, if you buy all of their products, it's $49 a month. Uh, but it looks like if you're a student or a teacher, you can get a super, super good deal on it for only $2.99. So if you've got a student account or you're learning, uh, definitely take a look at the Maxon VFX suite and particularly the Optical Glow. So if I throw Optical Glow onto this, I'm just going to turn off the default After Effects glow. You can play around with some of these settings. So I just think we're going to end up with something that looks a little bit more realistic and a bit more natural if you use the Optical Glow plugin. But you can definitely get a good result by just using the inbuilt After Effects Glow. Um, and the main reason that I want to use Optical Glow is because of this really awesome feature called Radiate. So if I just pump up Radiate a little bit, you can see we're going to start to get these cool beams coming out of it. And that's just going to add a whole another level, a whole another dimension of awesomeness to this. I don't think there's any easy way of doing these beams with these kind of radiant features in After Effects by default. I think it'd be really, really difficult. So that's why this plugin just adds so much more to it. Because if I play it through now, you get these really cool beams coming out of it. And it really does look like a super cool, futuristic, electrified shield. I'm just going to show you one other little thing that I did using this same technique and you can see the same thing in action. Uh, this was a thing I made for the rapper Giggs and the idea was that he threw this scrumpled up piece of paper at the camera. You can see him about to throw it here. So the idea was that he threw this scrumpled up piece of paper at the camera and you can see as the, oh, let's just turn the sound off. You can see as the paper comes towards him you've got the kind of the same electrical glow edges thing going on here and I've done the same thing in the text. So we'll just play that again so you can see it. 
Take a look at the ball as it comes towards the camera. You've got the blue electrical glow. And then the electricity runs across it just before it unfolds. So that's another example of this technique. There's something else that you can do with this. But as I said at the very beginning, I'm pretty sure this would work on literally anything, any object which has good contrasty edges. So I'm excited to see what you guys create using this newfound knowledge. And that is it. I hope this tutorial was useful. If you've got any questions, please do leave me a comment. I'll do my best to respond. If not, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.